dear brothers and sisters, in 2015, I finished my PhD uh, in the sociology of education at the University of Toronto. Then I returned to Tibet. Late next year, I got a phone call from my brother. He said, hey, Jalo, I need you to come back home to check on my two doctor, daughters. Strange things are happening with them. I don't know how to interpret it. On a Friday afternoon, I went to pick up my two grandnieces from their boarding school. But this was not just boarding school. It was a boarding preschool. They were only age four and five years old. And this was an entirely new policy in Tibet. When those two little girls got home, I closely observed them and the way they interacted with their family. They didn't hug anyone. There was no emotional exchange. They were silent, distant, and almost like a strange or a guest at, at their home. And I'm here to tell you today that all of this is by design. China's mandatory boarding school will destroy Tibetan culture and identity if they are not stopped. Like a gardener ripping out the tree from the ground. The CCP is trying to completely cut off Tibetan children from their cultural roots in order to eradicate us forever. Around 1995, when I was uh, teaching, uh, teaching at university, I noticed that my undergraduate Tibetan students were speaking Tibetan fluently in class. But one turn, they turn in the right written assignment. Their grammar was strange. I asked why. They said, this is the way we learn from our school. So I got their textbook and they realized that they were poorly translated from Chinese textbook. I thought we must write our own textbook. I organized a group of people, the principals, professors, and the students to ask how should we teach child literacy in Tibet. Together we came up with an outline, and then it was my job to write the book. I collect oral history from different villages, transcribe it, and edit it. In 1999 and 2000, we, when we distributed the book to the school around the Tibet, the kids were so happy. And their parents kept, kept asking to borrow their book. Parents said, wow, your school is teaching this? You have to go every day. The enthusiasm and the pride in our cultural the relevant textbook and on our own language majorly increased daily tendons. In 2009, when I heard a rumor that China was planning a mandatory preschool program in Tibet for children aged four to six, I thought we must get ahead of this. Let's bring everyone back together to discuss what we would want as a mother tongue based curriculum and give our recommendation to the Chinese government. But I was in Canada when Xi Jinping announced a new preschool policy. And it wasn't until I saw my grandnies that I realized that their boarding preschool curriculum was worse than everything we could have imagined. 
So for three years, I traveled across Eastern Tibet, visited more than 50 boarding preschools, meeting with students, principal, and local people, and I was witness it was nearly identical to my grandniece's experience. Students are forced to speak in Mandarin. Teacher can only use the CCP approved textbook. Every day, it's a lesson like this. So when those four and five eight years old children got home, they have almost nothing in common with their parents. Nothing to talk about, almost like they were raised in a foreign country. When I asked my brother, what would happen if you don't send the girls to the boarding preschool? He teared up and I said, the girls will be blocked from the getting an education for the rest of their life. Even if most Tibetans don't agree with this policy or Beijing's curriculum, they have no choice. This is why one million Tibetan children are in boarding school today. And this number means that three out of every four school-aged Tibetan children now live separate from their parents and in the control of Chinese state. As an educator, I call, can tell you that China's pedagogy is very advanced. They are brainwashing an entire generation of Tibetan kids so successfully that they won't know how to practice their own language, culture, and religion in their homeland. The Communist Party is trying to force our Tibetan children to become Chinese. If this continues, then China will end Tibet is a 5,000 5, years old civilization. In September 2020, after so many years of advocating for the right to receive a Tibetan education in Tibet, I began to face serious political consequences. I tried to fight this, but a well-known lawyer recommended that I live quietly right away before I'm in physical dangers. I was shocked. It, it feels so sudden, but I packed up all my things and uh, had the last dinner with my family. I told them I can't stay here anymore. It is possible we won't see each other for the rest of my life. But I couldn't bear to tell my 80 years old father the truth. So I just said, I have to go, but I will be back soon. Today I live with my wife and daughter in Canada. And I have watched the Canadian Prime Minister and the parliamentarians and even Pope Francis apologize for forcing indigenous kids into the residential school. And yet today, in 2023, China is intentionally recreating the genocidal system in Tibet. And it's nearly 10 times the scale. The only thing that will stop Xi Jinping and the Chinese Communist Party is the international pressure and the sanctions. We must force them to end this practice or Tibetan will cease to exist. Thanks very much. This is my flag represents my whole nation. Thank you.